Hello and welcome to this discussion on subscription economy. This is part two. Those who are interested uh, to know uh, where we started it from uh, should go and watch part one. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, we are going to also include two examples, one uh, somewhere in the beginning and one uh, close to the end. So do not forget to watch these two examples of pretty large companies, uh, one would be Coca-Cola, the other could be uh, Amazon itself uh, and also uh, Flipkart uh, to help understand how these companies could uh, do certain things using the subscription economy methodology uh, to improve their uh, customer bases and also rejig certain of the businesses. Um, so stay with us and uh, I hope you enjoy the conversation we are going to have and do uh, uh, like and subscribe. It's our honest request right at the start so that we can continue uh, doing the good thing. Those who uh, seek to uh, take consulting services uh, can reach out to me or my organization. Uh, the details are already provided plus you'll find additional details in the uh, description. So with this, let's quickly begin. Now, we know that product or services company uh, typically have a one-time subscription uh, or a one-time sale. Uh, compare that to a subscription model. You have subscriptions, which means that Though revenues could be much smaller, but they keep on coming. And that helps to create a much longer relationship with the customer. So your uh, lifetime value of the customer gets increased. Plus, you tend to take the customer towards loyalty. And that's where the whole branding proposition lies. right? Um, so let's... Uh, uh, try to understand this part first. See, uh, one of the ways to move to a subscription model is to one is to do horizontal acquisitions or uh, be available at horizontal positions. Uh, the second is to do uh, vertical alignments, which means that across the industry, wherever the your product or services are available, uh, to tie up with them. And uh, again, as I said, I've explained this in detail in the previous one so you can understand how you can engage how you can uh, take the relationship forward with other partners other uh, uh, product or service providers and finally is the direct access path the direct access path basically allows you to have a direct one-to-one -one with the customer so let's look at uh, two examples over here the first is oral b now what did oral b do oral b came up with the bluetooth toothbrush what does it do? It uh, provides you the not only the brush but with an application where you can send in details uh, as to uh, what is your response. Uh, they can tap you to know your feedback and thus engage with you directly as a consumer. Well, previous to this, they did not have direct access. So they did not know exactly who, whether I was as an individual using it their brushes or not. So that builds a high level of loyalty with the customer and you are able to uh, sell a lot more other products. You can do a lot of cross-sell. You are able to build in what we call as the subscription uh, economy pattern this way. Now, let's take the other case of, say, for example, Coca-Cola. And what can Coca-Cola do to enter into the subscription economy? See, today Coca-Cola sells off the shelves and Coca-Cola does not have uh, a finger to say on the real customer, on the real person who drinks Coca-Cola. It does know the age group, it knows the pattern, it know, it can tell you that, okay, if you are of this age group and you live in this location and this is the kind of education level you have, it can tell you all those uh, uh, analytical information, but it cannot pinpoint and exactly tell whether you are a customer now. What can that do? That can improve its relationship and that can build, help it build a larger uh, brand loyalty or 
brand loyalty and brand ambassadorship at the individual level. So what do you think Coca-Cola should be? According to me, so you can tie up with Netflix or Amazon Prime Money or the various OTT platforms to say that with every subscription, you get say 6 cans or 12 cans of Coca-Cola for free. The idea is to build in behavior. The second thing uh, that it can do is today you have a lot of these Danzo and Zepto uh, people uh, going around and of course sharing uh, delivering goods. It can tie up with them to allow uh, them to carry certain cans of Coca-Cola or Pepsi for that matter and tell them that hey look this is the uh, we also have a few cans of Coca-Cola if you want to buy uh, right because these are impulse buying the customer may say okay fine I'll add in extra 20 bucks or 50 bucks whatever the price is but the third thing it could do it could actually get into subscription models uh, like say for example uh, newspaper brands uh, because typically these are offered under subscription uh, so the newspaper vendor could not only deliver your morning uh, newspaper or your milk they could also deliver you your, your regular intake of say four cans of Coca-Cola or Pepsi right so you need to uh, uh, do that to basically build in or get into the subscription subscription economy so that tomorrow uh, you may ask people to directly shift into your application and hence you have a much better understanding and uh, data of your consumer behavior with regarding to your drink. Interesting, isn't it? Okay. So, uh, the idea is to move to direct access because, look, when we are building a relationship with the customer, we are getting into a transaction where we are exchanging value. Now, if you can make this recurring, there are a lot of added benefits. Of course, each transaction needs to be built under what we call as consumer fairness and that fairness uh, uh, should include also fairness of pricing now why is pricing an important game uh, in the whole picture of course people would say that purely because you know a consumer is buying based on price no there's much more uh, about pricing and if you talk to any pricing expert they'll tell you that pricing uh, is a very important factor especially when you are building brands and you are trying to reach out to new customers because the moment you are willing to subsidize user behavior you are willing to play with them and encourage them in using your products what does that lead to that leads to from subscription to loyalty and deepening the revenues of course you should also ensure that you should avoid uh, buyer's remorse which means people should not feel oh I think I bought too much how do you do that the right uh, first factor of consumer fairness there are long-term benefits of this of this practice look when a brand has very high consumer fairness not only does the brand help in spreading itself so it does not need a DEI and ESG it automatically comes in why because employees learn that they have to earn consumer consumer loyalty and with every transaction and what that does is that it helps in increasing the customer lifetime value it helps you to understand which sections are losing and hence it seems that your employees or especially your sales or uh, product specialists are not doing their job so you don't have to enforce, you don't have to uh, bring in productivity uh, consultants like us. You, you just ensure that people understand that the sales are dependent on how much they are willing to go ahead for the consumer. In fact, that is one of the core you'll find in uh, the practice that I found here. So if you note here, the three gradations of how you move from a uh, pipeline uh, business to a platform business and how you move from uh, on to a subscription economy you can see that everywhere right from the leadership support to the culture where they should uh, have your culture should be customer centric uh, 
answers this point. Let me tell you again an example over here. So there was a company called diapers.com and it was doing fantastic uh, business and Amazon till that time had not got into uh, the diapers business. So when it realized that okay this is something which is annoying and people are willing uh, to get into a subscription to get their uh, diapers delivered at regular intervals, uh, Amazon took on to uh, diapers.com and wanted it to be acquired. So they of course played the pricing game for some time till diapers.com realized that they cannot be fighting a giant like Amazon. So they gave in and thus uh, was born Amazon mom category which was focused on using the diapers.com model to deliver diapers at regular intervals. Big companies are noticing these changes. Why aren't uh, the average Indian companies? Because we are too much of a me too tradition. We would only take risks and challenges only if someone has done it before. But if you do not do that, if you do not take on the challenges, you may get left out all of a sudden. So what are the subscription models available? First, the membership model. What does the membership model say? It's basically where you are selling information or pre-curated data like uh, say a magazine, like say a musical subscription like Spotify or even uh, YouTube. What they do is they focus on selling you memberships to make you a member of that community of that particular tribe and ensure that you are able to uh, get and consume at regular intervals whatever your areas of interest are. Netflix and Amazon Prime also fall into this category. And hence it's important that supporting uh, product or service providers like I mentioned Coca-Cola should latch on to these platforms to ensure that they are catering uh, to the audience in a much better way and also are able to get consumer data. I'm sure Amazon Prime would not mind sharing his data uh, under strict confidentiality and purely for analytics purpose with Coca-Cola. The next is privacy uh, based subscription economy and I'm sure you are aware of the various clubs and events where there's only an buy invitation tag. These are all uh, focused on subscription based economy and what they do is they help you uh, both confidentiality and also exclusivity. Even if you are not so privileged to be exclusive, you could still enjoy what we call as the late comes first. Now this is based on uh, people who are willing to, consumers who are willing to pay a little extra uh, to enjoy certain kind of the privileges like say for example getting a special check-in at the airport and airlines are doing that. They are charging a premium uh, but I would suggest that they should make it into a subscription and use these factors into uh, under subscription economy rather than on uh, simply price base because this helps them convert and latch on to the loyalty band quite better. Uh, the fourth model is everything included. Now this is the typical package model you know whether it is the great famous dollar shave club uh, model or uh, you know, uh, uh, even your Amazon model that you get everything within it and a lot of formations are now moving on to the everything included saying that once you take my service everything all services are included or even standalone services like urban clap uh, kind of companies who are saying that okay come to us and uh, we will provide all your housing services so whether it's a plumbing job whether it's an electrician job whether it's a painting job house cleaning various services could be done under one window uh, and there you need to get into a subscription mode mode what this does again is it helps you build your customers and build your customers for long of course subject to again your customer fairness anyway if you are not customer fair always remember you would anyway get lost out but when you are able to serve customers in bits by bits not only do you increase your quality of services you are also able to understand 
how do you further improve upon that and get the additional chance of selling a few more uh, uh, factors like a Coca-Cola when you are servicing uh, your customer. Uh, then is the networking. Now networking is also uh, uh, what is typically used in technology like the various applications uh, whether you are networking your ERP systems, whether you are networking uh, your workforce, uh, whether you are offering them wellness uh, suites, whether you are offering uh, uh, customers loyalty points, uh, they all fall under the networking uh, concept. Now, uh, networking in a subscription economy would help you uh, to increase customers' uh, uh, loyalty. Like take for, take for example, when you say that, okay, when you come with your family, I'm going to offer you all meals free under under a fixed price, right? And you subscribe uh, if you get into a subscription model. Only then is this offer available, which means that it allows you say uh, four stays or six stays, uh, right? Uh, and what this does is that it again builds you brand loyalty, especially for hotels, uh, big uh, brands. It's very important. Uh, that uh, a customer of a particular brand does not go and pick up uh, a property uh, which is of a counter brand when they go to some other uh, vacation or location. Now, uh, these are good ways uh, to not only assure the customer but again uh, build a larger customer base and a loyal customer base. Not only technology, but even uh, companies uh, like gaming companies, LinkedIn, are using the power of networking to ensure that they start being a part of the subscription economy and be associated with the customer on a lifetime uh, exchange of value. The float service is one of the oldest and pretty well known. The insurance is one example. The second example is typically when you are offered uh, uh, a additional warranty scheme. Now instead of additional warranty for one year or two year, I would rather suggest to offer uh, this warranty scheme say for five years, right? typically the life of the machine and in that uh, charge on a monthly basis. Now what that would do is, is it would allow you to not only ensure that you are uh, not only in touch with the customer and get into direct access through a simple mobile app, it could also help you push additional products. Now we finally we come to the simplified model. Now here is where I would like to offer an example. I have seen in India particularly Amazon uh, the, uh, come out with its grocery and uh, so did Flipkart and they did not do well in this category. Why did they not do well? Look, one of the factors is that it is just not changing the way you price and transact with the customer. The additional factor here is also to change the way you interact in your transaction with the customer. So what should have Amazon and Flipkart done? To begin with, one is to allow moms and housewives to build a grocery list, you would have a deeper insight of how much oil the, the family consumes, how much rice do they need, how much of uh, pulses, how much of uh, ghee, how much of biscuits do they need, so that you could also then do a better deal onwards with your suppliers and of course get those items delivered at their doorstep every month. So then brands themselves, those biscuits brands could themselves become much more customer focused and know that okay we have a monthly defined requirement of so many uh, biscuits from uh, Amazon customers. So let's also sometimes offer, give a festive offer especially to them saying that okay you are buying biscuits with us for so long, this time we are offering you this at an additional 50% discount for uh, those selling stocks. And once you have built in the grocery list, you make half of the job easy for the housewife or even for the husband who, is, who basically goes uh, to collect them uh, uh, from the local store to have them deliver. 
and voila you have made this not only a model business model running you have ensured that people have got into a subscription model say that i would allow you to create a grocery list if you subscribe to it uh, for at least uh, six months right so uh, when you uh, build in these linkedin and when you start uh, using simplified models uh, to ensure uh, a lot of companies have done this uh, the simplification model like say for example take whatsapp all it has done is it has simplified the privacy you require when you chat one to one and that's what whatsapp did and uh, hence when you start looking at things from a much simple window uh, you are able to uh, also develop your models so it does require those uh, parts of the simplification process so those who are interested can reach out to me uh, we as a team of uh, both uh, people and business analytics uh, we help out companies uh, in crossing these milestone uh, getting into the new age economies um, bringing building growth and of course uh, uh, working together with them to ensure that they are able to reach their goals so if you are interested reach out to us and thank you for uh, your support for subscribing to us and we look forward to uh, your continuous support uh, with this uh, thank you again and have a nice day ahead